Hello everyone, Andrew here, and welcome to my brand new Let's Play of Donkey Kong Country 3 Dixie's Double Trouble. This is one of my favorite games. I mean, I say that about a whole bunch of the games I play. But of course, if I'm going to Let's Play a game, um, I want it to be something that I really enjoy, so hopefully, you know, that kind of translates uh, into enjoyment for everyone else. I'm sure someday I'll do kind of a, a blind Let's Play, but uh, for now, let's just stick to the really fun games. And yes, this is the third Donkey Kong Country game in the series, and for the longest time, it was the final Donkey Kong Country game. Um, until they finally created Donkey Kong Country Returns, we have, you know, a little demo here of what the heck is going to be happening throughout this Let's Play, although, I mean, I guess there were the remakes for Game Boy Advance, too, but they technically weren't new games. Even they did, uh, have some different things that the Super Nintendo version didn't have, but yeah, we're gonna be riding around in boats, and, uh, going through the old, you know, shack in someone's backyard, and doing a whole bunch of other stuff, too, so, I guess we'll little... stop spoiling the entire game, and go to the file select screen, I don't have a file on this cartridge. Let's see, who is going to be destroyed? It's going to be SK, it's going to be Dixie Doof, or it's going to be Wolf. Eh. I want to be number one, so you are gone. Um, one of the cool things about Donkey Kong Country is that you can like uh, you can do multiplayer as well. But, you know, it's not like same time multiplayer, so you could do it as um, one player plays as one of the characters, and one player will play as one of the other characters, or you can do it where you take turns beating the level, but we're just going to do single player. There we go, I have to enter my name. If I remember correctly, this game only has room for five letters, so of course Andrew's not going to fit, but I've found a way around that. Um, I usually just leave the E out of my name, because I mean, when you say it, it sounds exactly the same. It's like, Andrew, <laughs> you don't really need the E at all. Yeah, stupid thing, only five letters. How many names out there have five letters, really? Okay, <laughs> so there we go. And it just kind of throws you right into the game, and Dixie kind of swims over to that piece of land, and goes to Wrinkly's save cave. I did not control any of that, by the way. If it was my choice, I would have explained a lot more before we went in here. But here we go, Wrinkly Kong, who was introduced in Donkey Kong Country 2. Um, she will help us save. And she also has a few other things. So she found life a little too hectic with the Kong College that she ran in the second game. Like I said, uh, she also helped you save there. And even gave you some hints. But yeah, so we're pretty much over the entire overworld. We're going to find her in a whole bunch of places. And she will help us save our progress. And there is the save screen with my awesome typo's name. Um, and here are a whole bunch of things that we're going to collect throughout the game. Donkey Kong Country 3 introduces quite a few new things. And, um, but I think, I always thought that they were actually a lot of fun. So basically you have your time, overall percent, DK coins... Silver bear coins, which replace the uh, small banana coins in the second game. Uh, those will be used to uh, trade for items and buy other things. Bonus coins, banana birds, which are in uh, new addition to this game. You will need to collect all of those to get uh, full completion. And something really mysterious to the right of that that I'm not going to get into. And we have a whole bunch of question marks which represent items that we will find along the way, uh, which is another new addition to this game. And those items will cause things to happen on the overworld and do a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, it's good to have a visit, blah, blah, blah. And she has a Nintendo 64 in the background there. But there we go. I think that's enough of the automated part. Uh, Donkey Kong Country 3 has a really, really, really cool overworld. Um, when you're on the water, it's pretty much free roaming. You can go wherever you want. And uh, luckily, we don't have to swim everywhere. As you can see, there's a boat rental shop right there that we will be uh, visiting shortly. But uh, once you get out of the water, you'll usually have to go onto fixed paths. But it's still really neat. I've always really liked the way that the overworld looks. And the music's good. Um, I like a lot of things about this game. So overall, we can go to Funky's Rentals, or we can go to this really weird house right here. So let's go over to this thing, just for fun. We're going to be quick. We have this guy. Uh, he is one of the Brothers Bears. I always call them the Bear Brothers, but I suppose that's technically incorrect. So if I say it wrong, please do not, you know, like, yell at me in the comments. Basically, these guys are all over the place. I believe that there are 13 of them across the entire overworld. And we will need to visit all of them if we want to beat the games. As you can see, he has some things on the shelf there. Um, you can sometimes buy items from them. You'll sometimes need to trade them items in order to get other items from them. Or sometimes they'll give you useful information. Um, and then, so pretty much you'll always want to have to, you'll always want to visit them. So we can always ask, you know, like, where's the shell from? Um, this adds a little bit more dialogue to the game uh, than was in Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2. I mean, of course, you go and talk to Cranky and stuff like that. Um, this is... Um, you know, it, it doesn't really get in the way. There's still all the awesome platforming and stuff, but I kind of have to explain this to that. Suddenly, later on, I'm not like, oh yeah, by the way, there's this part of the game. Um, do we want to purchase it? Yes, but we do not have enough money. So where's the shell from? We have, is that a mirror? Um, so yeah, pretty much those are obviously both things that you're going to have to buy at some point. But 50 coins, I remember as a kid thinking, that is way too many coins. But, you know, later on, um, <laughs> we'll probably have to come back here. Because the mirror is not required right now. 
And we can always say nothing thanks, and we just leave and we pass. So basically, you're going to be visiting guys like that all throughout the game and doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff with them. And like I um, said, when we visit the Wrinkly Save Cave, all those question marks that represented items, of course, the shell and the mirror are two of those items. But here is Funky's Rentals. Um, instead of, you know, being a flying guy in this game, he for some reason decided to take up boats. Do not ask me why. And so he set up a smoking new boat shop. I mean, I guess, like, um,. I guess surfing or, you know, the boats are kind of funkier than flying, but... So I guess he finally realized his true life calling. Yeah, here we have Kitty Kong, who is, of course, going to be the second main kind of character that we play as in this game. Wait, did, wait, did I say... Wait, which Kong did I say? I, I hope I said Kitty Kong. I kind of thought for a second, I'm like, I didn't say Kitty Kong, did I? Um, yeah, so Kitty Kong is kind of like DK in the first game, is how he's a bit better... Uh, he's a bit, you know, bigger than Diddy is. And he also has the ability to destroy some enemies that Dixie will not be able to destroy. But yeah, basically we are going to be renting boats from uh, Funky here. So let's take the motor boat, which is the only one that we have access to at the moment. Throughout the game we'll get access to a whole bunch of more new boats, which will let us do things like go over rocks and, of course, go faster. So, you know, right now uh, we are not going very fast at all. So yeah, I'm not going to try and show you that you cannot go over those rocks. Also, anytime you can take the boat back to Funky um, if you want to visit the safe cave or that house there. So the first place we are supposed to go is to the, this world right here. So like I said, once you get out of the water, you're kind of forced to follow the fixed path. And that takes you to Lake Orangutanga. But before we go there, there are hidden secrets all across the overworld. And one of them is right here. You want to look for any kind of place where you can get off of the boat that doesn't necessarily have a signal like that flag there. And this is Bounty Beach. And if we go inside here, we are introduced to a little bit of a mini game. So pay attention here. So we have red, red, blue, and yellow. And you might also notice that um, each of the crystals has a letter on it. And if you look down at your control pad or your, your controller, you notice that the crystals are set up exactly like the X, Y, B, and A buttons on that. So basically we have to press A, I think, oh, A, X, B, yes, I can remember four letters or colors or whatever you want to call it. And by doing that, we have freed a banana bird. And uh, as you might remember, there was a counter for that back at Wrinkly Save Cave. So all throughout the game, we are going to find caves like that. And we'll have to free all of the banana birds by remembering those uh, patterns. And they will get more complicated by the end of the game. I don't remember exactly how many they start going up to. But hopefully everyone is good at Simon Says or whatever that game was. But anyway, now we can finally go to the first world. And if we go inside of here... You'll notice that we go kind of from the big overworld map to a smaller overworld map, and this is where all of the individual levels will be. Um, a level that we have not completed yet is indicated by a K flag, just like this, and the first level is Lakeside Limbo, so I suppose we'll jump into this. And here we go. Um, just like in the second game, you can throw characters upwards by pressing the A button, and then pressing Y while holding up. You can kind of throw them up to higher places. And uh, this is useful in this level because you will sometimes find items on top of these kind of walkways that you go under. Uh, under. Also, you can press the Y button to roll into enemies. You can pick up barrels and throw them at enemies. You can also jump on top of enemies as if this was like the biggest ripoff of Super Mario Brothers ever. DK barrels, um, if we lose one of the Kongs by taking damage, um, we can get them back by hitting that. And jump on top of this guy here, and as you saw, there was an A button there. And uh, this is something that is new to this thing, uh, new to this game. Um, and that is sometimes you will want to throw Kitty Kong, who is much heavier, um, than, you know, than like Diddy in the previous game. So pretty much, no matter who you were throwing, it was always the same. Uh, Kitty Kong is very heavy, and you can use this by throwing him at things, and you can kind of break open the floor just like that. And this is a bonus barrel, which will take us to a bonus game. There can be up to three bonus games in a level, and when you complete one successfully, you will get a bonus coin, and we'll need all of those to get 100% in the end. Uh, this is the very you know, basic bonus game. Just collect this, all the stars, and then the bonus coin will appear. And since it's the first bonus game of the game, um, they made it very simple. I believe there are four kinds of bonus games. Collect the stars, defeat all the enemies, collect all the green bananas within the time limit, and just find the coin randomly hidden somewhere. So we can counter many bonus games throughout our adventure. Also, this guy right here is also a new addition to Donkey Kong Country 3, and he is called Coin. What he has is a shield, and there is no way to kind of destroy him from the front or by jumping on him or anything like that. The only way to kill him is by throwing a barrel, causing it to rebound off a wall, and then hit him in the back. After that, he will drop the DK coin, and we can add that to our total right there. Now, that is a bit different from Donkey Kong Country 2, where DK coins were hidden, you know, 
pretty much anywhere. They could be, uh, you know, in the water. They could be floating in the sky. Uh, in this game, DK coins are always uh, being held by an enemy like that. And you will always have to destroy him in order to get it. Anyway, let's see. So far, we're doing pretty good. Let's see. Right here. All right, this would be another point, another, another a good time to point out another kind of new feature of this game. Uh, Donkey Kong Country 3 inter introduced a lot of new things, and I honestly really like that. I feel that you're doing something right when you keep all the core stuff there, but you introduce a, a few cool new features along the way. Um, if you roll as Kitty Kong into the water, and you hold Y, and you press B the instant you hit the water, you can actually kind of skip across any body of water just like that. But if you don't press B... You know, you kind of just go in there, but if you time it perfectly, you can kind of, you know, skip water sections sometimes, which is kind of funny. So there you go, that's just kind of a fun thing. I don't think too many people ever actually really take advantage of that. Also, of course, Donkey Kong Country, uh, you are rewarded for being very observant, and in this case right here, uh, going under the dock will take us to a bonus barrel. And another thing you always want to remember when playing Donkey Kong Country is even when you think you've found a secret, don't stop looking, but sometimes if you go just a bit farther, you'll find another secret. So, um, do, do not be deceived. Sometimes there'll be like a bonus barrel, but if you keep going, there'll be another bonus barrel. And this, this game is like the trickiest game ever, but that's one of the things I love about it. All the kind of searching you have to do. But here we have Collect the Green Bananas mini, uh, mini game. Green bananas will appear randomly all over the place, and if you don't pick them up uh, within like, you know, a couple of seconds, they'll disappear and reappear in another place, and you pretty much just have to pick up um, enough to satisfy the counter at the top left before time runs out. So let's see, one more, and the bonus coin will appear, and there you go! Two out of... something. I'm not going to spoil how many there are. Or I might just not remember exactly how many there are. I have a good guess, but you know what? It's not important at the moment. But here we have our first animal partner of the game, Ellie, who was introduced in this game and was not in any of the previous, uh, previous games. Get it? Ellie the elephant? Um, it kind of takes the place of Rambi, except, you know, since there's no horn on the front, you can't just run into your enemies. One thing you can do is if you hold the Y button, you can kind of bring barrels to you, which is, you know, although, I mean, it wasn't really super useful in that situation. You could have just picked it up anyway, but yeah, it's kind of a neat thing to introduce there. You can jump on enemies. I think there was a balloon up there. Oh, wow. I actually don't really remember ever getting that. Get off! So you press X to get off. Actually, I was wrong. The kitty should be in front, so then you can pick up Dixie like that. Okay, I kind of completely forgot that there was a blue extra life there. Um, I, this, this is a good chance, actually, to kind of talk about the different kinds of extra lives. There are red balloons, green balloons, and blue balloons. Red is worth one, green is worth two, blue is worth three. And also, never end the level until you go behind the exit. You just never know what the heck you're going to be missing. This thing right here, well, when you grab it, it will uh, kind of raise the flag, and that will indicate the end of the level. The flag will uh, be a different color depending on who grabs it. So Kitty is blue. Uh, Dixie is pink, but my favorite color is blue, so I suppose we will go with that. Now, uh, the color of the flag that you beat the level with isn't really significant unless you're playing two-player. kind of tells you, you know, who beat the level, but it's still just kind of a fun thing. Uh, because as you can see on the overworld now, uh, the flag is blue since we beat it with Kitty, and there's also a bit of a yellow piece on the flag. That yellow piece will only be there if you have collected the DK coin. Otherwise, it will just be a solid blue flag, so that is what that indicates. Also... The flag is blowing, you know, strongly in the wind. It's not, you know, it's not kind of like drooping down like it's a, you know, a crappy day outside. That indicates that we have found every single bonus coin that was hidden in the level. You can also tell if you have found every bonus coin by noticing that the end of the level name now has an exclamation mark. So you can either look at the flag or look at the level name to tell if you have all of the bonus coins. But unlike in the second game, where when you get the DK coin, a DK coin symbol appears beside the level name, now you have to look at the kind of yellow piece, and that will indicate if you found the DK coin or not. And next up is Doorstop Dash. Uh, but as you can see, there's no exclamation mark at the end, because obviously we have not found all of the DK coins yet. So let us get on with this. Uh, this is kind of, you know, an inside, an old abandoned, crusty house kind of level. Now, that's one of the things I like about Donkey Kong Country. There's a lot of really interesting level themes. It's not, you know, Super Mario, where every single game is... Desert, grass, water world, volcano, the end. It's like Donkey Kong has some really bizarre levels, you know, like factories and all this other kind of crazy stuff. And I, that's what I really like about Donkey Kong Country. Also, if you have not noticed yet, the theme of this level is grabbing levers, which will cause these doors to open. And then after you let go of the lever, uh, they will close slowly until eventually they get to a point where you cannot fit through. There are also these trap doors where you can walk across them, but if you jump on top of them, you'll fall through. They're not too much of an issue, so we're just going to kind of jump over that and get on with it. These guys right here are called buzzes, and they replace zingers in this game. Uh, zingers were the kind of 
wasp bee enemies that were very prominent in Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2. Although, uh, th uh, in this game, for some reason, they decided to kind of uh, change that. I honestly don't mind. I think that, you know, they're kind of a pretty cool enemy. Um, but, you know, some people were like, oh my gosh, they took away one of the most you know, coolest enemies of the game. Also, what you want to do here is you have to throw Kitty up because you want Dixie to be in front. So that way she can kind of use her flutter ability to get over to this door, which has a 1-up and a bonus game. And we have Collect 60 Stars. So here we go, another kind of Collect the Stars minigame. Um, usually the bonus games are very well made, and they'll kind of take advantage of whatever the theme of the level is. So, of course, the theme of this level is opening the doors with the levers, so that is going to be kind of implemented into the bonus game. That's something I really like about Donkey Kong Country. I mean, everything is so well made, and just flows together perfectly. And, uh, yeah, that's definitely shown well there. So, let's see, it's kind, of, it's kind of floating rope here. Let's pull this lever, and we have some... I'm, I might accidentally call them Zingers at some point, just because, you know, Zingers... It's a cool name, and, it, and uh, they are in the first two games. But, yeah, they're kind of Buzzes, or Buzzers, or... I, I believe that they're, they're just called Buzz. Like, B-U-Z-Z. -Z. So, I guess they're technical... Uh, technically, they should be called Buzzes, but... Buzzers sound so much better. Anyway, let's shoot up and get this. Here we have a spinning barrel. Everyone hates these things. You have to time your B button press perfectly to shoot in the correct direction. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, luckily that was not too much of an issue there. Let's see. So, oh, also one thing about Donkey Kong Country is never let the bananas fool you. They usually kind of indicate uh, indicate the correct path, but in order to find secrets, of course, you will want to kind of uh, you know uh, diverge off of the the kind of laid out path that. They expect it to take. So here we have just find the token. Also, it should be noted that if you get hit in a bonus game, you will instantly lose, even if you have both Kongs. So you can never, ever, ever get hit by an enemy. Um, the good thing is, though, is that you can never die inside of a bonus game. Falling down a hole or being hit by an enemy uh, will just instantly take you out of the bonus game. As you saw, it kind of took us um, a little bit far away. And you can usually just go back to the bonus barrel again, uh, to, you know, to kind of do a second try, if that's what you want to do. Let's see, let's just get this. We're up to K-O-N. Getting all of the Kong letters is not required. It will give you an extra life. Um, but overall, if you don't get all of the Kong letters, I mean, it's not like it's it's recorded anywhere like in Donkey Kong Country Returns. So if I don't get every single letter in every level, I'm not going to be too concerned about that because that has nothing to do with kind of the overall completion percentage of the game. Okay, so you just pull that for a little bit, get through here. And do not be fooled by this point. I mean, we could go really slow and get all of the bananas it does a uh, Dixie. I think there's even a green one-up balloon, or, you know, a green two-up balloon somewhere along the way. But what you really want to do is stay left, because if you keep falling, you're going to miss this kind of little secret over here. And this is, of course, where the DK coin is located. And we have to throw that through there. And there is our uh, second DK coin. So, again, just like the bonus games always kind of, you know, have something to do with the theme of the level, getting the DK coin will, too. Like you have to open the door and kind of throw the steel barrel through it. Um, I've always really liked the way that they did that. I mean, I could fall really fast, but then I realized, Andrew, you need to get the, th the uh, two-up balloon, so let's do it. Also, where is the two-up balloon? Maybe it was invisible. Oh, there it is. Okay. Donkey Kong Country will also have invisible items sometimes, which are huge uh, kind of pains. So uh, be careful for that. And sometimes even uh, bonus barrels will be invisible, but usually it, you're not too lost. When you're looking for them. Anyway, we've switched over to Kitty Kong, so let's raise another blue flag. And there you go. That is the second level down, and that takes us to Wrinkly's Save Cave. Let's see, so if we go inside here. Let's see, oh my gosh, she's asleep, so let's we'll have to kind of like take over her computer and then record our progress. We've been playing for only nine minutes? It feels way longer than nine minutes. I wonder if that's only like in level times. I guess I did, you know, spend a lot of time explaining things on the overworld. There you go, 5% in the first part of the video. Two DK coins, five bear coins, silver bear coins, four bonus coins, and one banana bird. Thankfully, since the coins are used a lot, like uh, the bear, silver bear coins, are used a lot more in this game than the kind of small banana coins were in the second game. Even if you turn off the game, it will remember how many bear coins you have. So, I mean, it's not like you have to get 50 coins in one sitting, which is very good. Although your lives will always go back to, I think, like, four, which sucks. But at least the coins save. That is the important thing. And one banana bird. No items yet. And, yeah. There we go. We just kind of leave her to do her thing. And with that, I believe that is where we are going to end off the very first part of Donkey Kong Country 3. I am enjoying this way too much. I have been way too excited 
Um, but yeah, I hope that everyone really enjoyed that and that you're looking forward to seeing more of this incredible game. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. And I hope to see you next time for something different. So thanks and see you later.